my fellow nerdikins welcome back to another episode of that's so nerdy today we have got a deck profile for you for the winning deck of the last uh gameplay video and that's gonna be piccolo jr evil reborn so this is uh i think it was bt6 when the starter deck came out i don't know that was before i started playing the game but I found the leader a while ago and I really like it and I've been working on trying to make it uh, a good deck behind it for a long time. And I think I, uh, I think I may have finally uh, gotten to a point where I feel it's uh, in a good spot. All right, so uh, for those who don't know, on the front side, it only draws when you attack a leader, which I mean, it is the downside of a lot of old leaders, but uh, you do get to restand two energy when you awaken. And then on your awaken side, uh, he's got the auto of you just draw when you attack and an activate main of once per turn, pay a green energy, KO a battle card with five or less energy, and he gets plus 5k for the turn. Uh, so that, that comes in pretty handy when... Uh, when your opponent is, uh, <clears throat> when your opponent wants to play battle cards, but if your opponent is playing a deck that doesn't really need to play battle cards, that, uh, that ability is a little bit lackluster, but, uh, in, in decks that, like, want to play a lot of battle cards, that, uh, that ability is so nice. So we're going to jump straight into the unison package. And the first unison we're running is uh, four copies of the meager unison of sorcery. Another old unison. This one's from uh, BT10. So the first block of the unison warrior. Um, it's got a per for those who don't know. It's got a permanent ability that if it were to lose an amount, uh, lose a marker to an attack, then uh, you can take a card from your life instead. And then it's plus one is. Uh, it gets plus 10k for the turn, and then it's minus threes, it gets to KO one of your opponent's battle cards, and then you choose another one of their battle cards, ignoring barrier with an energy cost of three or less, and KO that one as well. So that, uh, that ability comes up sometimes. Uh, not a whole lot, but it does come up. And then the second unison we're running, once, uh... The main reason we're running the Demigri Unison is so uh, our Charismatics get online uh, a lot faster. You can have them live turn one, and then uh, it also just gives you access to your dormants for free. And uh, if you keep just your leader and that Unison on board, those are the only two targets your opponent's gonna, uh, gonna be able to swing into, so since the unison doesn't take uh, doesn't take markers off from swings, it's gonna help you awaken since this leader doesn't actually have a secondary awakening ability since it is so old. But the second unison we're running is three copies of King Vegeta Invasion's Command. This, uh, I see this unison getting much more popular. It is, it is so good. Um, it's a counter attack. Spirit Boost 1, play this card with 3 markers on it. So you'll pay the 3 Spirit Boost 1 and uh, comes in with 3 markers on it. So you can play the Unison during your opponent's turn and still have your all your energy available uh, to you during your turn uh, to play out battle cards or do things that you want to do on your turn. Uh, the permanent ability doesn't matter because we don't play any of the Great Apes because... Uh, during your opponent's turn, if you have a great ape on field, it reduces his uh, cost by one green energy. So you can actually, uh, if you are running the great apes, you can pay two energy and spirit boost one. He comes in with three markers instead of having to pay the three energy, which, I mean, is nice, but I don't have, I can't really find room for the uh, the apes in here, so I don't run them. But. Uh, the plus one on this card is what is so absolutely strong, just beefy, beefy uh, ability that you get to choose one of your opponent's uh, cards in their hand and make them discard it, or choose one of their battle cards, ignoring barrier, and KO it. 
no energy restriction. It's amazing. Super clutch ability. And then it's also got uh, a minus X of activate main and you can KO as many battle cards as markers you're, that you remove from this card. I'm going to be honest though, that, uh, that minus X never really comes up because you're with the combination of your leader and the plus one on the unison plus all the ability to KO cards in the deck. Uh, their, your opponent's board is going to be pretty small the whole time. And then we'll go into our one drops. <coughs> Excuse me. Since this leader doesn't have its own self-awakening, we have to run something like this. Uh, newfound power, Sun Gohan. He is a one drop 5k that when you swing with him, uh, you can take a life. Add it to your hand, and he gets plus 10k in critical. So that's going to help to try and deprive your opponent of resources from their life if they don't, uh, if they don't combo up or counter out. And if they do, then that's going to deprive them from some of the resources in their hand because they're trying to save what's in their life. And that's kind of going to tell you how important their hand is to them. Uh, if they decide to combo up rather than uh, pr uh, rather than sacrificing the life. And then the last of our one drops is actually our super combo. It's Vegeta the Lone Prince. And uh, he's got a permanent ability that he can't be played out with skills. Uh, but that doesn't matter because I don't, I don't ever try to play him out with skills. But he's got an auto ability that when he... Uh, well, normal... Uh, normal Excuse me, I'm sorry, I do not know why it was so hard to speak right there. He's got a normal super combo ability of when you're at four or less life, uh, when you combo with him, you get to draw a card. But he's got a second auto ability that when you play him out, your opponent rips a card from hand. And uh, I know hand control isn't super prominent right now, and honestly this deck isn't like real, real super hand controlly, but it does help to have those aspects in here because it makes cards like this that much more powerful because if your opponent can't uh doesn't have a big hand then they can't really swing through this because for those who don't know this is uh bupo machin Bu and unadulterated malice it's a counter attack you pay to play him pitch a card from hand and then uh if your opponent wants to attack any more for the turn they have to pitch two cards from hand so if you're already keeping their hand low, that uh, that card right there is a turn stopper. A lot of the times, by the time you're playing out Bupo to protect your life, your opponent's hand is at a small enough size that they really don't want to pitch the cards in their hand uh, to be able to swing through unless their hand is just absolute garbage. <laughs> and then we're running two copies of Sun Goku Spirit Bomb Unleashed. Uh, it's a three cost 15k with an activate main limit one for one green energy. If you have a green unison on board and three or more energy, you can play him out for that one green energy. And when he gets played out, you remove a marker from uh, your opponent's unison, which is decent. I mean, uh, it helps against uh, unisons with floodgate abilities like uh, like Bardock and and things like that. So. Uh, you can just punch through their floodgate abilities. But uh, he's also got a second activate main that once per turn, if you spirit, it's spirit boost X, you get 5,000 uh, power for every marker that you remove from your unison. And if you remove more than two markers, he gains double strike. But honestly, I don't really ever use that ability. Um, or at least it hasn't come up. It's nice that it's an option, but honestly, he is there for an evolved target for uh, one of the cards coming up later in the deck. And uh, since this deck does have a lot of power to KO cards and is able to just uh, pop cards super easily, I play two copies of Surprise Attack Frieza. So it plays out when you KO a battle card and it is a 15k 
uh, 15k crit. Well, it plays out if you don't ha already have a copy of it on the field. So you can't, like, spam two of them on one turn. <laughs> but we are playing green. We are playing unisons. So we are playing Charismatic Villain at four. Especially since we have our unisons live so early. Uh, it just gives us access to this card throughout the entire game. Uh, it really, really makes your opponent think twice about the things that they're going to play and what they want to do. Uh, in fear that this card's just going to come out and pop whatever they play. So it's a counterplay. If you have a green unison with two or more markers on it, it's free. And when it's played, you get to KO a battle card with uh, power, uh, excuse me, energy cost of seven or less. All right. And since we are playing Charismatic Villain, we really want to be able to utilize um, that card to its fullest and since once it's played and we're not playing King Cold so it doesn't get the power boost of the fields um, to really capitalize on Charismatic Villain we're playing three Zamasu Deities Wrath uh, you pay one energy if you have three or more energy you uh, choose green battle cards in your battle area with 5,000 power or more in uh total energy cost of five and place them in the drop area and then play this card from your hand so you just pop the uh the frieza pay one energy to play out zamasu he has twenty thousand power and indestructible and we will actually uh talk about a combo that i was turned on to from i really do apologize about the uh about forgetting the name of the channel that I saw the tech in, but I really, really like it and I'm gonna implement it in this deck and I'm going to explain to you guys which cards I'm going to uh, move around to actually make it work, to make it fit. And then uh, we're running two copies of Majin Buu Unadulterated Destruction. We're actually gonna cut this down to one because you never, if you're ever going to play it, you're only ever going to play it once. So I think this is going to be like an, another like pseudo secret rare, just a one of in the deck, but uh, it is really good. So it's a 5k that wipes yours and your opponent's board, including unisons, makes your opponent pitch two cards. Uh, and then if, uh, if this card's in rest mode, your opponent has to pitch two cards every time they want to swing into your leader. And uh, he's got 30,000 power, deflect, revenge. So he's going to hit the board. And he's also got a nifty little auto that if you have five or more energy, uh, if he's removed from the battlefield or KO'd, what does it say? Excuse me. If you have five or more energy, if this card is placed in your drop area from your battle area by an opponent's skill, play this card from your drop area. So essentially your opponent's gonna have to swing into it to KO it, or they're gonna have to pitch two cards from hand every time that they wanna swing at your leader. And by the time you're playing that card out, your opponent's hand is actually gonna be so low that they're really not gonna be able to swing through like that. <laughs> and then we are running two copies of Kaioken Son Goku Decisive Battle. This card, I have a love-hate relationship with this card because it is really good since when it's played you choose two of your opponent's battle cards ignoring barrier and KO them. The thing I don't like is at the end of battle it warps it. If he's still on the board he warps himself and he gives your leader and all Sun Goku cards minus 10k for uh, until the end of your opponent's next turn. Um... It's really strong though because it is a 25k double strike dual attacker with deflect and barrier so it's going to hit. There's not going to be a lot of things that really are able to stop it. I mean if your opponent's playing black then they could petrify it. Um, but that's not a super, super big deal considering how we have, we have a little bit of a tech, a little bit of... A sneaky tech in here to uh, keep him from going to the warp but it does 
it doesn't stop the uh, the power ne the ne uh, excuse me the negative effect of the uh, power, but it does keep the card on the board, and that is Indomitable Spirit Super Saiyan Blue Sun Goku. EX Evolve for free on top of a Goku with an energy cost of 5 or more. That's going to be this guy here. Um, he's got Double Strike and Barrier, and at the end of the turn you switch him to Active Mode. So, usually what I'll do is I'll play this Goku out. And this is usually around turn 5 that I'm doing this. Um, if I don't already have this Goku out, because normally uh, when I'm doing chains like this, I don't want my cards to be vulnerable. So I don't really put them on board until I'm ready to actually go up the chain. But, uh... <sighs> So what I'll do, typically on turn 5, that way I have an energy open for responses uh, for some of my counterattacks and some of my other extra cards as well. We'll get into those in a moment. But I'll pay 1 to play out Goku, remove a marker from their unison, and then I will EX Evolve for 3 energy into this Goku, KO 2 of their battle cards. Um... And then EX Evolve on top of him after I swing once with him. So it's a 25k double strike swing right there. Boom. It's got Deflect and Barrier, so it's not going to get touched. Um, and swing in. And even if they Petrify it, you just EX Evolve into this guy. It nullifies their Petrify. And he's not going to be uh, restanding until the end of your turn. But... He is going to be restanding, and you are going to have access to him if you actually do need to, like, say, pay the one to combo the 10k with him. But that doesn't really come up. Usually when you're going into that chain, uh, you're going for the kill. And now let's get into our extra card package. We are running four copies of the Realm of the Gods Chompa Destroys. It is, uh, it's an EDK light. Honestly, during your opponent's turn, you get 15k and you rip, uh, they choose a card in their hand and, uh, rip it. Or if it's your turn, you choose one of their battle cards with an energy cost higher than their current energy and they KO it. Um, the reason I call it an EDK light is because of, uh, and for those who don't know, EDK means uh, Earth Destroying Kamehameha uh, in reference to Cell's Earth Destroying Kamehameha. Uh, one of the IARs from, I believe it was set 9, just before the unison block. But like I said, that was a little before my time. I didn't actually start collecting and playing the game until set 11. Uh, which was a great set to get in on, especially since... Uh, my first SCR that I ever pulled was Baby Hatch. And that's actually right here on the channel. You can check that video out. It's one of my oldest videos. It's super campy, super janky. Uh, lighting's terrible, but feelings are real. Feelings are real. <laughs> All right, so get, uh, getting into the counterattack package. We're running four Shocking Death Ball because it's the Sparking and uh, it's the Sparking Negate and it KOs a two drop or less when you play it, which does come in handy. And then it's green, there's unisons, so there's dormants. Four dormants, uh, if you have a unison, you don't have to pay its energy cost, and then you pitch an extra, uh, you pitch another green card from your hand, and it, uh, your opponent can only attack one more time this turn. It doesn't stop the current attack from going through, but sometimes that's actually really useful because sometimes you only want to take one, maybe two damage to say like awaken or something. And that's when, uh, that's when dormant potential co comes in really handy. And then we're running two copies of homicidal clones. Uh, we run the homie clones cause, uh, they're just good. It also is going to help you awaken because, uh, a lot of times, 
at least from what I've noticed, when you're at five life, if your opponent has the ability to, they're going to try and swing in with a double strike swing. That way it's harder for you to combo out and you have to take that extra life. And if that's the case, you could just take, uh, take the life card, play out homie clones, play out the token. Um, and if they're not playing red or they don't counterplay the token, then you have a blocker token on board to help you with one more attack. And this card, in tandem with this card, they, they work really, really well together. <laughs> and then the last of our extra cards is Blue Impulse. We're running two copies. We're actually going to cut this down to one copy and put one of the copies into my side deck. The reason uh, we're running Blue Impulse is because uh, a lot of decks really like to play out battle cards during your turn like their floodgates or uh, a lot of counter plays our uh, a lot of counter plays are battle cards that play themselves out uh so for example this this bupo right here is a floodgate that would play out during my turn and if that happens if i have a unison on board this only costs one pay the one and it wipes their board it doesn't ignore barrier but it's it's a full-on board wipe if they play a card during your turn which is so nice but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to cut this down to one as well and then i'm going to cut this down to one and I, I will side the second one of these for when it's relevant to run a second but the reason i want to cut those two down is to run this hit right here this guy because uh it is so good it is so good and the only reason i'm not running it yet is because it is in the mail on the way to me now um so the idea behind him is you're going to you're going to want to have your zamasu out on board that way you have a 20k swing either your zamasu or your goku or even this goku something something with big power even your unison Actually, no, it has to be a battle card. It has to be a battle card. Um, but you want something with, like, big power. And then you swing in to a battle card. And then if they don't counter, you combo with the hit. And then uh, try and guarantee that they're going to be losing that battle card due to that battle. And then you pay the two to play the hit out. He's a dual attacker and he's kind of like a built-in floodgate. So if they don't remove him the, uh, from the board, they're going to have more choices to make. And the more choices you make, the more chances there are to make mistakes. Um, and I'm sure you've noticed that I haven't gone over the SCR for this deck. I keep bouncing back and forth between uh, the Incarnation of Demonic Evil, but I just... I find that it's too much of an energy investment on the turn that I want to go in on because honestly, I'm spending four energy for my big boss swings. And since I'm spending that energy, I if I wanted to use the counter counter, I'm gonna have to wait till like turn seven. And this deck, that's even for a deck that is kind of as defensive as this, um, you don't want to go that long. You typically want to go like turn five, turn six, uh, and that's ending the game. So the SCR that I have settled on is Kabito Kai because this will, uh, I like to call it diet hatch because you pay two energy. It's an activate main, activate uh, slash activate battle. You can play this card and your opponent can't attack with battle cards for the turn. So if you say have, oh, you only have two energy open, but you have a shocking death ball and a uh, and a champa destroys in your hand, or no, say you have two shocking death balls. So you can, if you have the life to necessitate it, spark it to play those to counter the leader swing and the unison swing, and then. During their unit, during one of those swings, pay the two to play out Kabito Kai, and then they won't be able to swing with any battle cards on their board. And if if you really feel the need, there is the option to Spirit Boost two and steal your opponent's unison. But I don't really see that 
coming up. Well, it's never actually like come up for me because the unisons that I run in this deck are the unisons that I want. Um, the only time that I would want to be stealing my opponent's unison is if, say, I want to... They're running Boonison, and I want it off the board so I can swing in with my battle cards without worrying about them being bottom decked or uh, him using the blocker. But that's typically the only time I'll ever steal the unison, um, because if I'm going... If I'm shutting down their turn with Kabito Kai, I'm... I'm either already dead in the water and just trying to buy myself enough time to maybe pull it out, or the the game is sealed, uh, sealed for me, and I'm going to take I'm going to take the W. But that's the deck uh, deck profile for Piccolo Junior. I am uh, actually super proud of this deck. It's one of my little pet projects. I've worked really really hard on this one for a really long time, and I think Bandai really really needs to reboot this leader he deserves it we we deserve a good namekian leader we don't we don't have a good namekian leader we have some good namekian cards but we don't have a good namekian leader we don't have a good namekian deck we need one we we've got tons of good saiyan decks we've got good frieza decks we've got good android decks we need a good namekian um, if you want to see my ideas about the reboot, there's actually a video on the channel. You can go check it out. Um, I think that that's a good way to make the leader relevant and not at the same time make him overpowered. Um, so that's going to be it for today. If you like what you saw, just go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment and subscribe. And push the uh, notification bell, that way you can be notified every time I drop a gameplay video or a deck profiler, you know, any video in general. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I try to answer every single person that comments to me. Uh, so y'all just have a good day and stay 